So it's 8 o'clock, which is the time for starting this webinar on optimizing post-game nutrition. And I'd like to welcome you all to this call. I'm Nancy Clark. For some of you, um, um, I might be a familiar name. Others of you be familiar be familiar with me. I live in the Boston area where I have a private practice in sports nutrition. And I've worked a lot with athletes of all ages and abilities. So that could include members of the Red Sox and the Celtics to uh, working with members of um, the colleges in the Boston area. And a lot of times with the ordinary folks that are working really hard to improve their performance, to run a faster marathon, to have a better triathlon, or just to um, be the best that they can be in their sports. So I'm I'm pleased to be here this, af this, this evening, as it is, um, talking about... Uh, the benefits of recovery and how so many people think, oh, I finished my workout, and then they rush off and do something. But no, you haven't finished your workout until you've refueled. So we'll be talking about refueling today. So what we'll cover is just looking at what is good post-event nutrition. You know, what, what are the best things to be doing to optimize your recovery? Look at the research that's been done on chocolate milk, and the dairy industry has done a lot of excellent research um, to see how their product holds up with athletes that are needing uh, to rapidly refuel. And look at tips on how you can create a post-game nutrition action plan. So let's just start looking at nutrition, post nutrition, post-exercise nutrition, and just recognizing that it is important that it can affect your performance at the next event. I was just doing, looking at some research on hockey players that didn't do a good job of, of um, refueling and that the next event, which actually was three days later, later when they had training on two of those three days, and they, um, you know, couldn't cover as much distance or skate as fast so that when people forget to recover, it shows up at the next event. It can also help reduce the chances of injury and boost the, boost the health and well-being of athletes. We know that proper recovery can enhance the immune system and to prevent uh, um, some of the rundown um, wear and tear of being an athlete that can occur with repeated days of training. So recovery is just as important as pregame nutrition. Who benefits? Well, the people that are just walking around the block really don't need to worry about recovery because they haven't depleted themselves. They haven't exhausted themselves. So we're really looking at runners that are training for a long, hard distance race. Swimmers, all day they should be fueling up, refueling up, refueling when they're in an event that they're working, they're working um, you know, repeated events. They have to always be refueling from one event to get ready for the next one. Soccer players after a game, particularly, particularly if they're in a situation. But, you know, I actually recommend all athletes focus on recovery because it's just a good habit to get into. It's a good part of a training program. And one of the things that it can do is just um, keep people from getting too hungry. I work a lot with fitness exercisers, and they sort of think, oh, I don't want to recover after I've worked out because... You know, why do I want to replace the calories that I worked so hard to burn off? But then an hour or two later, they're starving, and then they go and they eat the whole bag of cookies because they've gotten way too hungry. So by having a, a recovery fuel after a workout, even if you're just kind of an ordinary exerciser, that it can nip that appetite in the bud, and it can be a good weight management technique, or so I found with the clients that I'm working with. So there are indeed many benefits of recovery. And interesting is that running is that runners know what to eat before the race. Athletes know what to eat for the pregame meal. But what about afterwards? And that's where people kind of flounder. Many of them just haven't planned ahead. So much so much of fueling for sports comes with being responsible. And some people think about, think about recovery, other people think about it, but don't get as far as doing anything about it. So that's why we want to educate people about the benefits. Research suggests 
that many athletes recognize the importance of recovery, but they aren't sure how to best recover. So here's a survey looking at 263 competitive runners and cyclists and swimmers, and more than half of them were half of them. The average age was 36. And on average, they did about 10 events a year, almost about one a month. So what did they think were important characteristics of recovery foods and fluids? Well, most of them said, you know, protein is the most important thing. And I see that all the time, people having, you know, protein shakes after they recover. About 2% said said carbohydrates. Less than half, 6%, 6% thought that protein and carbs that combination was important. And 39%, more than a third, they weren't sure what was best. So clearly, active people need a little bit of guidance as to know what you actually do after a hard workout to recover. The research suggests when athletes recover that most of them drink water. And that's what more than half the people do. Only about a quarter of them used a recovery beverage, and the rest of them had an assortment of things. But only about one in four of the athletes opted for a recovery beverage. Now, when it comes to refueling after a workout, you know, there are lots of options. We all know those that go for their beer, and they think beer is a great source of carbohydrates. Well, actually, most of the calories in beer come from alcohol, and so you have to drink a lot of beer in order to get the carbohydrates that you need for your muscles. And people say, okay, Nancy, I'll do that. And it's like, no, not the best plan. Soft drinks are very popular after exercise, excellent source of carbohydrates, but unfortunately it's just fine sugar, fine sugar and empty calories. Um, um, most sports drinks um, are also popular. And notice how if people have... You know, a sports drink or a soft drink, it gives them just the carbohydrates, just sugar, but it doesn't give them the protein that they're needing. So that's where a a recovery beverage has that carbs to refuel and then the protein to build and repair. Chocolate milk, excellent recovery drink, probably saves you a lot of money over having buying an engineered sports food, um, and it gives you that carbs to refuel, protein to build and repair, and that's what we're looking for. So after exercise, the body the body wants protein, muscle breakdown, muscle breakdown and to sim, sim, stimulate muscular growth. The body needs carbohydrate to, to refuel the depleted muscle glycogen and fluids and fluids and electrolytes to hydrate the body, hydrate the body and replenish the sweat losses. Now, when I'm counseling, many of them are just convinced that protein is the most important part of the recovery diet. And so I go to the science and explain to them what the body really needs. So this is a, a landmark looking at looking at um, what foods refuel the muscles. So glycogen is carbohydrate energy that's stored in the muscles. When you eat um, any fruits, vegetables, grains, any carbohydrate food, stored as your muscles as glycogen, Um, and dairy also has carbohydrate in it, the lactose, the milk sugar, so it gets stored in the muscles as glycogen, and when you exercise hard, you deplete that glycogen. Now, if you do a protein shake after you exercise, it that um, will fill your stomach, but it doesn't refuel your muscles. Or sometimes people do a hard exercise and then they have an egg white omelet or they have an egg and cheese omelet or sometimes they have fried chicken, which is, again, protein and fat, or a chicken Caesar salad, protein and fat. Those foods fill the stomach. They don't refuel the muscles. So that's where after hard exercise, you want carbs to refuel. Only carbs refuel. But but you want some protein to build and repair. But actually, you need three or four times more carbohydrate than protein. 
So I found that too many people these days are not eating the carbs that they need to refuel. They're just going for the protein. Now, this slide shows, shows that within the hour after you exercise, that your muscles are most receptive to refueling. And that if you've totally exhausted yourself, most of the recovery happens within the first 24 hours, 25 hours. But it can take up to two days to fully refuel. So the muscles need time to refuel and time to repair. So that rest is a very important part of a recovery program. But in terms of fueling, something like a chocolate milk has the carbs that you need to refuel, the protein that you need to build and repair. So for post-exercise nutrient lines, what research what research suggests to optimize fueling is carbohydrates. And if you want to get really nitty-gritty, we're looking at 0.75 grams carbs per pound of body weight within that first 30 minutes after your hard workout. And then again, every two hours for the next hour, six hours. For protein, what we want is about um, one gram of protein for every three or four grams of carbohydrates so that you want three or four times more carbs than protein, but that protein is very important to build and repair. You need fluid to replace the amount of sweat that you've lost. So you can figure out what your sweat rate is by weighing yourself before and after you work. So, so if you're doing a hard, heavy, sweaty workout, weigh yourself before. You have to weigh yourself, have to weigh yourself with not a lot of clothing, because if you just weigh yourself afterwards with sweaty clothing, you're just weighing all the sweat. So weigh yourself with minimal clothes before and after. Take into account if you've had anything to drink. And you can figure out how much you've lost. So for each one pound of weight that you lost, that's 16 ounces of fluid. One pound is 16 ounces. So in a workout, in a hard workout, if you've lost two pounds, that's 32 ounces. That's a quart. And then you know how much you've lost, you've lost, and you know how much in your next workout that you want to target to replace. So for recovery, carb, carbs, proteins, fluids, and also electrolytes. And how many electrolytes you need will depend, depend on how much sweat that you've lost. So heavy sweaters would need people that, people that, that haven't sweat that much. So for example, a 120-pound lead who's done a lead, who's done a lot of heavy duty heavy duty size size would need would need about 80 of carbs of carbs and that's the amount that you might get in 24 ounces of chocolate milk would need protein again about a a, a quarter of as much protein as carbohydrate 20 to 27 grams and that's about the amount that you get in the in that 24 ounces of chocolate milk you'd get fluids so that this person might need uh, 24 ounces of fluid if that's how much that she lost during that event. And electrolytes such as sodium to aid hydration and other minerals. So I forgot to mention at the beginning that if if you want to mute your phone, if you haven't done so already, press the mute button or star six because I noticed we've got a little dog in the background there. So if you could mute your phone by pressing star six or just the mute button, that would be helpful. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that at the beginning. A person, a person who weighs 190 pounds, uh, who's done a heavy workout, again, would need more carbs, 130 grams carbs, 32 to 43 grams of protein, more fluids, lost more in sweat, and electrolytes, again, depending on how much that of the sodium that has been lost in the sweat. So the amount of recovery needs depends on the body size and how much the person has been exercising. So when it comes to choosing an active post post-exercise drink, what does the research say about chocolate milk? And as I mentioned earlier, the, the dairy industry of excellent of excellent research using really top notch researchers to find out about milk's benefits. Chocolate milk certainly has a lot of liquid acid. It's 
It's got the protein that's needed to help build muscles, to reduce muscle breakdown, and work with the carbohydrates to restore muscle glycogen. Milk has carbohydrates, the lactose, that rigor that refuels muscles and restores muscle glycogen. Milk is loaded with electrolytes. Most, most people don't realize that. Um, and electrolytes help replenish what's sweat. And electrolytes are normally called minerals, sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium. And um, milk is very rich in calcium, potassium, magnesium, and also has enough sodium to help with uh, fluid replacement, electrolyte sodium replacement. And milk clearly is a fluid. And you don't have to drink water to have water, but any fluid um, will give you the water that you're needing to help repli- to help rehydrate the body. Milk also has the benefits of calcium and vitamin D to strengthen the bones and help reduce the risk of stress fractures. <clears throat> and B vitamins that are needed to help convert food into energy. And Nine essential nutrients, additional vitamins that are not typically found in the traditional uh, sports drinks that are made out of just pure, uh, just a, a simple sugar. So that certainly milk has a lot of liquids that, that really make it a powerful recovery drink. I'm sure many of you looked at, at the food labels, the nutrition facts on the on the carton of milk, and you can just see all the different nutrients it is. You know, 30% of the calcium that you're needing, and the vitamin D, and um, you know, the high quality protein. So, if you compare nutrition nutrition facts on low fat chocolate milk to that of like you'll drink, you'll see that the labels are very very different because milk has an is an excellent source of nine essential nutrients and a lot of, you know, high-quality natural proteins and is a life-sustaining fluid. Little babies live on milk, so it's certainly a high-quality food. When we look at the research, uh, the research has been done looking at performance, looking at refueling, looking at rebuilding, and looking at rehydrating and the power that milk has in all four of those categories. So it can help with performance, refueling, rebuilding, and rehydrating. In terms of performance, drinking chocolate milk after a hard workout could give athletes a performance edge according to a growing body of research. And as I say, the dairy industry is doing some excellent research. Here's um, what the results studies or studies that chocolate milk aids performance for the next bout of exercise. So here we have a study comparing chocolate milk versus a sports drink that is just a carbohydrate sports drink. And most people at, after they've worked out, that's what they reach for, just um the the sugary sports drink. And the chalk gives them gives them the carbs, the sugars, but it has all sorts of other good nutrients in it. So they the the athletes do hard workout and then then they're given the beverage to recover and then four hours later after the first bout of exercise, those that recovered with chocolate milk, they are able to exercise longer in that second bout of exercise with more power during that second workout. Cyclists cycled fifty one percent longer until they were exhausted in that second workout. They had significantly more power and they faster, faster, shaving about six minutes from their, their ride time compared to when they just had the, the sports drink. They had twice the improvement in their VO2 max. So those are a lot of significant changes just by having low-fat chocolate milk versus a sports drink. Recovering with chocolate milk gave runners a performance edge. Here's another study looking at rational runners who ran 23% longer in a follow-up run after drinking fat-free chocolate milk compared to a typical sports drink. So the way that this worked is these runners did a 45-minute run at a moderate pace. They drank their fat-free milk 
or the same number of calories in the carb-only beverage. Post-exercise milk results in muscle, break, muscle breakdown and more muscle synthesis. And that's what you, you want. You don't want your muscles to be breaking down. You want them to be building up better and better in that follow-up time trial. So just think of tournament situations, people doing double workouts, do, people working hard day after day. This is where when you've got a long season, season it's very important on a daily basis or at a per-workout basis, to make sure that you're refueling to get ready for the next bout of exercise. What does the research say about refueling? Low-fat chocolate milk contains the right 3-to-1 mix of carbs and protein, so three times more carbs and protein, scientifically shown to help refuel muscle. Chocolate milk helps restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Here we look at the research that's been done. Chocolate milk helps replace muscle glycogen. So here we have these runners that did the 45-minute run at moderate pace, and they drank 350 calories of free chocolate milk, chocolate milk, or a carb-only sports drink. When they had the chocolate milk after exercise, they had greater concentration of glycogen in their muscles at 30 minutes and minutes, 30 minutes after that. Um, first bout of exercise compared to when they had just the sports drink. And what we focus in on here is that the chocolate milk had the right mix of carbohydrates and protein, three times more carbs than protein, because you need three times more carbs to refuel than you do protein to build and repair. What does the research say about rebuilding? Low-fat chocolate, low chocolate milk contains high-quality protein to help repair and rebuild muscles after strenuous exercise. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, little liver, liver is really, is really high-quality quality protein. And this is what we're looking for after strenuous exercise. Here's research that shows... Um, that if you compare milk to better that don't that don't have protein, Canadian researchers found that active adults who drank milk after resistance exercise, after they were lifting weights, they experienced greater support for muscle gain. Other studies other studies found that untrained men and women who drank fat-free milk after exercise gained more muscle. And they also lost more body fat at the end of a 12-week training program. So the research suggests that, yes, that milk's advantage may be due to unique properties of milk proteins that may cause differences in the speed of digestion and absorption. But certainly all the research that's been with, with, with uh, chocolate milk has shown benefits over an engineered sports food type of a product. So the muscle building advantage comes, comes with your chocolate milk. So here we have a study of moderately trained runners, and they had fat-free chocolate milk after exercise, and the ones that did had enhanced skeletal, skeletal muscle protein synthesis, which means that there's, which is a sign that their muscles repair, repair and rebuild more so than fluid replacement, replacement drink with just the carbs, so that the muscles are better able to recover and rebuild and to grow. Athletic men and women who drank milk one hour after a leg exercise, exercise routine, who did who were doing strength training with their legs, experienced a significant increase in two amino acids. Again, their muscles were taking up the nutrients from the milk and helping to enhance their muscle development. You know, people often wonder about amino acids, particularly the essential amino acids. It's one of these terms that sort of gets thrown around the gym. And milk has all the essential amino acids that are needed, that are needed to build muscles. You can get these essential amino acids. Isoleucine and leucine are just two examples of them. If you have a whey protein, that is a good source of essential amino acids. You can have chocolate milk, 
tasty form, convenient. You can also get it in tuna fish or cottage cheese so that all real foods, all high-quality proteins have the essential amino acids that you're needing to build muscles. Sometimes people think they need to buy these engineered foods with essential amino acids. <clears throat> and it's like, no, no, no. All real food, high-quality proteins, um, dairy um, and animal proteins have all the essential amino acids that you might need to get the most out of your workout, to build your muscles the way that you'd like them to. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. Here's a study looking at athletes who recovered immediately pain or, pain or chocolate milk, and they had less exercise-induced muscle damage than those who drank water or sports drink, according to several studies looking at this. Exercise-induced muscle damage can lead to future impairments in muscle performance that you won't be able to work out as well, which affects your future exercise bouts. So when you're lifting weights, you don't want to um, you know, continually tear down the, the the muscle. You want to refuel, rec- so then it, so then it can grow bigger and stronger. And by giving them the, that carb protein combination, carbs to refuel, protein to build and repair, you'll be able to get more out of your workout. What research say search say when it comes to rehydrating and replenishing. Refueling with chocolate milk after exercise helps replenish what your body has lost, including fluids and electrolytes that get lost in sweat. So milk helped restore and rehydrate better than other popular post-exercise beverages. Research believes that natural electrolyte electrolyte content and energy density may help restore and maintain hydration after exercise. As I mentioned earlier, milk is loaded with electrolytes, um, and that's a fancy term for calcium, potassium, magnesium, and and milk is very rich in those, as many foods are rich in, in electrolytes. Like I say, we usually just call them minerals. Now, milk also has sodium in it. People think that you need a sports drink for sodium, but actually milk is a rich source of sodium, um, not so much that it's considered to be a high-sodium food in the way that someone might think of um, <clears throat> um, if they're trying to stay away from sodium. Athletes need, athletes need some sodium to help with rehydration. So here we have a study that looks at um, some dehydrated subjects that they did um, dehydrating exercise, and they covered by drinking two, quart, two quarts of milk, and that was a hundred, to replace 150% of their sweat losses. So one quart is two pounds, two quarts is four pounds, and so they had lost, I can't do my math here, probably about three, two and a half pounds or so, and they replaced more than that because the kidneys don't absorb, your body doesn't absorb all of the fluid that you're drinking. When they had the milk, notice how in those two quarts of milk, they got about 1,000 milligrams of sodium, whereas when they had a typical sports drink, they got only 40 40 milligrams of sodium. And when they had water, they really didn't have any sodium to speak of. The more sodium in the drink, the more urine retained, the less, the more retained, the less, the more water they retained, the less urine that they lost. And this was five hours after that exercise period. So you can see that the more salt that you have, the more sodium you have, the more fluid you retain. So you're able to rehydrate better. Whereas the sports drink had less sodium and they urinate, lost more, lost more water in their urine. And similar very similar to the amount that they lost when they just had water with no sodium at all. So that, you know, an excellent source of electrolytes could be that low-fat chocolate milk. What the researchers also found is that low-fat milk, it emptied slower than the sports drink. This limited the influx of fluid into the system. It was very well tolerated, and it provided protein for recovery. 
and what we find is that people tend to enjoy their chocolate milk and that they they do indeed um, tolerate it very well and it's a, it can be a drink of choice. So milk helps replace the essential electrolytes that are lost in sweat. We're looking at potassium and <clears throat> milk can provide 12% of the daily value. Magnesium Again, 8% of the daily value in a glass of milk. Calcium, 30% of the daily value. So three glasses of milk give you pretty much the calcium that you need for the day. Sodium, and even though it is rich in sodium, it's only the, only 4% of the daily value. Like I say, it's not considered to be a high sodium food. Okay, if, you're, if you're, don't have your phone on mute, please, so then we, so then we don't have to... We don't get confused here. So mute is press star six. So milk is flint source of, cal- source of calcium for strong bones. And this, here's an interesting study that found that basketball players had significant bone mineral content loss throughout the season. 6% loss overall. And what the researchers thought that it was likely related to sweat losses. Because when you sweat, you do lose, along with the sodium, you lose a little bit of calcium. And they and they were losing 150, 150 milligrams of calcium per session. And that's you know, almost what you get in a glass of milk. And they found that adding calcium to the diet helped to offset those losses. Now, many times, people that aren't milk drinkers um, don't get the calcium that they're needing. And so this is where... It's important for athletes in particular who want to maintain strong bones to have the benefits of of a calcium-rich food such as low-fat chocolate milk in their diet. So rigorous exercise can cause substantial loss of calcium, and it could could increase the risk of bone fractures if it's not replenished. Now, here are just two journals, Medicine, Science, and Sports and Exercise, and the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. Um, these are just two examples of the many um, well-respected journals that are publishing the research that's coming out talking about the benefits of low-fat chocolate milk. And if you're interested in looking at the studies that, we've, that I've been talking about, go to gotchocolatemilk.com and you can find all of those references. So let's put it all together and and create a recovery plan for yourself and for your athletes if you're a coach or a parent. So to optimize recovery, we want to pay attention to that two-hour recovery window. And this is called be responsible. You know, most athletes, they're responsible enough to show up for their workouts, but somehow they don't end up being responsible enough to take care of their fueling up or refueling after. Very often they forget about the food part of it. So they want to pay attention to that two-hour recovery window and have the right foods there. The the foods that are there should emphasize fluids and carbs, carbs to replace the sweat losses, to re- provide the protein that's needed to rebuild and repair the muscles, and the carbs to refuel. And Want to have foods that are you want to have foods that are easy and convenient, and if you just you know bring a cooler along with you, um, then you can have your snacks ready and waiting. So snack ideas, as we found, low, low, low fat chocolate milk is an excellent choice because you're thirsty. You may not be hungry, but certainly you're thirsty. And we know from training tables, anyone that's ever worked at a, a not a or training table or a recovery table that you know the first thing that the athletes reach for is the, the chocolate milk and this is particularly wonderful for female athletes because most of them love chocolate and they get to have it guilt free um and many of them don't drink their calories but um and they don't drink milk but by having the chocolate milk they're getting what they need to recover, but also enhancing your overall health by getting the calcium that they need from the what calcium that's in the milk. But they get it guilt-free because they have permission to drink it and to refuel properly. You know, other recovery snacks they have turkey ro- turkey roll-ups, some cheese with apple slices, along with some pretzels, so you get that carb-protein combination. 
tuna sandwich on a whole wheat bread, you know, banana and peanut butter. There are many ways to get carbs and proteins together. But the nice thing about milk is that very convenient three to one ratio of of a fluid and you're thirsty, you may not be hungry and you might want something that tastes really yummy. So if you want to get in the game, you know, I'd encourage you to log on to gotchocolatemilk.com and you can find tips and tools to help you perform at your best. And you can also find out how you can win your own milk mustache ad or get sponsored by Team Refuel. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that in the next slide. But there's sponsorship available for people that want to be a part of Team Refuel. You can stay up to speed on all the science, science and interact with the athlete community if you go to facebook.com, chocolate milk refuel, twitter.com, the handle is, the handle is got choco milk. If you want to talk to your dairy or your state and regional um, dairy representatives, you can find out where your favorite chocolate milk is sold. I know that a lot of dairies are um, very eager to <clears throat> get involved in this whole athlete in um, using chocolate milk as a recovery food move, movement. Now, if you're interested in getting sponsored, you know, pay attention to this. If you're a passionate athlete or you know athletes that grab low-fat chocolate milk as a part of their after, their recovery food, you know, make a video and submit that video for a chance to join Team Refuel. And you could win $500 in sponsorship money. You get a lot of team refuel training gear. You get the chance to compete for team refuel in the 2013 Rock and Roll Marathon in Edinburgh or in Madrid, their marathon or half marathon. So Edinburgh, Madrid, $500 team refuel. And you also get the chance to start a national ad. So applying for Team Refuel can also help challenged athletes rebound because for every vote cast on your video, that $1 will, go, $1 will go to the Challenged Athletes Foundation. So hopefully you've made low-fat chocolate milk a part of your athlete and you can represent it by submitting a short video online today. Again, um, go to gotchocolatemilk.com and find out more information on that. So we've saved time for questions, and I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. So, hearing anything from hearing anything from anyone who's the moderator that has the question. I'm trying to figure out what I should do about that. Oh. Yes? Okay, so some questions that people have is concerned about the turned about the debts and the debts and milk. And what I would say <clears throat> is that yes. Chocolate milk or vanilla milk or strawberry milk, any of the flavorings in milk, they are sweetened with sugar, but that sugar is what fuels the muscle. So I don't look at the sugar 